What's going on everybody? Welcome back. This is another episode of Asheville Real Estate News. Rodrigo Fondor here and today we are talking about what you need to do, what you need to have in place to be ready to handle winter when it comes to your properties. So if you're a landlord, if you're a homeowner and you were about to deal with winter, the cold, the wind, etc. What do you need to do to make sure that the property is going to survive and uh, not need a lot of crazy maintenance over that time period, uh, especially uh, if it is a rental property? What do you need to have in place so you have minimal maintenance calls during the you know during winter and holiday months, etc.? So today we are going to dive into that uh, by somebody who has a lot of knowledge and experience on dealing with just the normal wear and tear that uh, rental properties have specifically. <music> I'm joined by Ben Wall of Asheville Rental Maintenance. What's going on, man? How you doing? Straws, I'm a little like not <laughs> focusing on you enough to have this conversation good here. But uh, I wanted to, you know, have you on the show and everything, and uh, take an opportunity to to connect with you. Um, I know when I first got started, and some of the first like rentals I had, they were all mobile homes, and mm -hmm. man, my first winter was absolutely. I think it was like every weekend something was going wrong. Right. and wanted to have the conversation with you and you know to try to mitigate that if somebody just bought their first you know rental or if they're you know first winter being homeowners what do you have to do to make it you know not be a big issue mm -hmm. well there are a couple of really obvious things out there yeah and i've chosen to touch upon a few that are cheap to free to address mm -hmm. and you could theoretically get up at any moment and take care of these things right now. Okay. Well, and before you dive into them, like, mm -hmm. give us a little context or background on on, on who you are and, and how you got here and, and what you do. Sure. So I run a company called Asheville Rental Maintenance, mm -hmm. as you introduced, and we specialize in where your fix it guys. Okay. If you own a rental property, um, I'm sure you get calls from your tenants periodically. The toilet's backed up. You know, maybe mm -hmm. a fixture's broken, an appliance is broken. Mm -hmm. Something that's maybe a little too small to justify, you know, calling all pro or mm -hmm. gentry heating, um, but still might very much be above your skill level as the property owner. Oh. That's that's what we do. Yeah, well, if it's changing a light bulb, it's usually above my skill level, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, yeah. so, so you guys go out, you 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 fill that gap between working mm -hmm. with like the licensed and just somebody who's really right. knows their stuff. Right, and we, we get out there, we take care of it in a timely mm -hmm. fashion, and we do it for less than your bigger companies. And so how long have you all been, or how long have you been looking at houses, you know, even before you started your company? Right, so I have been doing handyman work in one capacity or another since since I was a teenager, okay. really. And I'm, I'm 25 now, so that's a solid decade, mm -hmm. at least, and then, I work my way through college mm -hmm. as a freelance plumber, just doing little odd jobs mm -hmm. here and there. And then my current company, Asheville Rental Maintenance, mm -hmm. we just launched in July, right. but we've been keeping really busy since then. Well, houses need a lot of work, don't they? They certainly do. Yeah, it's uh, so funny enough, you know, we're in mm -hmm. the real estate thing, it's a whole different thing, but I don't believe in home ownership because I don't want to have to fix anything. I like would, it's really nice to like mm, be able to call somebody and have it be addressed, right? Right. I, I would I would be inclined to agree. I yeah. mean, I, I rent. Um, given my field of work, I'm also the one who generally fixes thing, <laughs> everything around the house too. But um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, home ownership or yeah. property ownership is certainly not passive. Mm -hmm. By any means, it's yeah. it's a it's a very much like a living, breathing asset that takes a lot of care. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. That's a it's a good way to put it. So, you know, we're in winter. We're we're not about. You know, although today it feels really cold mm -hmm. uh, when we're filming this, and you know, so we're moving in end of October, beginning of November. What uh what do you need to do to prepare? Make sure your properties are taken care of. You don't have any busted water lines. No HVAC systems go out in the middle. You know, don't want to get that type of call mm -hmm. Christmas morning or whatnot. All right. So a few simple things. Yeah. Um, the first and this one, the ratio of how easy it is to take care of versus mm -hmm. the money it could save you later is huge. Mm -hmm. Disconnect your hoses from the hose bibs. Hmm. 
Now, especially people who may, might have moved here from a warmer climate right. might not understand this. Our hose bibs here yeah. are different from your hose bibs in Florida mm -hmm. in that they are made of a slightly more complex assembly. Mm -hmm. um, what I have right here, and I collect many dozens of these a year because <laughs> I do this exact repair. What I have here right. is what's referred to as an anti-siphon frost-free hose bib. Okay, so what's that actually mean? Okay, so what that means mm -hmm. is that it contains a mechanism that allows the water to drain out of the assembly completely in order to avoid frozen water inside of the assembly that can lead to a rupture and okay. water leaking inside of your wall or mm -hmm. your crawl space. So what I have here is a busted one. This is very typical. The water stayed in the pipe and was not allowed to drain out. And so come winter, the water freezes inside the hose yeah. and travels up in here and it expands and it breaks. Um, unlike hose bibs in warmer climates, and this is why a lot of people miss this, mm -hmm. the assembly jets inside of the house mm -hmm. and the actual gate that controls the flow of water mm -hmm. is located 12 inches inside mm -hmm. of your house. Okay. Okay. So basically when you leave your hose on the mm -hmm. siphon or anti-siphon isn't allowed to do its job. The water stays there. You get a frozen busted hose. Bib. Gotcha. And this can be avoided by simply first frost of the year, go outside, disconnect the hose and from good. the hose bib. You're good to go. Hmm. It'll do its job. Now, if you don't, that can you, so you, you, you won't you, pipe. <laughs> yeah you, you got a ruptured pipe but you won't know until the spring you when you it. go to get a power wash no or doubt. turn your sprinkler on mm -hmm. for a while and all of a sudden you'll be like why is my crawl space completely full of water and if you even notice reason. yeah if, if you even notice or why is my house smelling musty all yeah. of a sudden um so that is definitely a big one and it doesn't cost you anything yeah if you have tenants that might be something to tell them, or if you regularly inspect your properties mm -hmm. yourself, this would be an excellent thing to add to your checklist. Gotcha. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. So what else do you have besides the, the hose? I didn't, I didn't know that. That's a, a good thing to be aware mm -hmm. of. So another good thing to think yeah. about is um, the way your pipes are insulated. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people um, think that pipe insulation is a be all end all. I put the insulation on my pipes and now they're going to be fine. Right when that's largely not the case. So mm -hmm. when you're preparing your home for winter, mm -hmm. something to think about is not just whether or not your pipes are insulated, but how cold is that space getting mm -hmm. where the insulated pipes happen to be. Right. Um, a pipe insulation, it kind of works like a jacket. If you've ever worn a jacket in winter and then you do some exercise or run up a hill, you'll be really warm right. under that jacket because it's your body that's producing the heat. Mm -hmm. And the same principle applies with pipe insulation, um, which is that it, there needs to be warmer water mm -hmm. than the surrounding air temperature inside of that pipe, inside of that insulation for it to work effectively. Right. Hence why it's often suggested that during a real deep freeze, you let a faucet drain. Right. And it allows the continuous movement of water and- It's harder to freeze itself. Exactly. Yeah. So, since you're, while well, you're thinking about that and you're asking yourself, well, how cold is the space going to get? Yeah. That would be the time to consider perhaps um, maybe a heater in your mm -hmm. crawl space if you've had previous issues with pipes freezing right. before. But the simplest thing is to go to your local hardware store and buy a heat cord. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is um, going to run you between 10 and $25. Right. They come in various lengths. And that will actually wrap around your pipe mm -hmm. inside the insulation. Heat tape, right? Or yeah. is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. And um, that is a really good surefire way to keep your pipes from freezing. You know, it's if you really cold the when issue. the pipes freeze anyways with that on, right? Right. If, 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 have, have you uh, experienced one freeze anyway with those on? Yeah. It was like three years ago I, mm -hmm. or four years ago. I don't even mm -hmm. remember, but it was, it was cold. It was a bad winter for me. Yeah, it was I, like, <laughs> yeah. So I I'm a lot more proactive now because after that right. one, I was like, oh my goodness, never mm -hmm. again. Right. And uh, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. I think it was once a week, there was like 
something was going wrong at a different place. Right. It was all water, like pipes bursting type of stuff. It was just like a nightmare, yeah. Sure enough, I I, I mean, I keep track of the weather report. And I know on those days when I see it dipping well below freezing, Mm -hmm. I can expect my phone to ring. Yeah, do you do you, sh- you have like alerts set out with the pe- with your different people and clients that you work with like hey make sure you tell your client your your tenants or make sure you make your waters drip yeah that's that's certainly something to include in a discussion with your tenants about general upkeep yeah. um, however though obviously we can't trust tenants to do everything all the time mm-hmm. so the really the best thing to do is is proactively make sure that your areas yeah. that have a high potential for freezing are either, you know, well heated right. or have employed like a heat cord or heat mm-hmm. tape. Okay. Well, what else uh, have you got to keep that house uh, so in good shape? Another very simple thing, mm-hmm. and it's so, you know, simple that it ought to jump out at more people than it does, but it, it doesn't. Um, so fall, right. the leaves come down. Mm-hmm. Leaves go in your gutters. Before the season really turns and gets cold, clean your gutters out. Mm-hmm. Just make sure they're cleaned because while we don't get a whole lot of snow and ice in this region, we do get some. And when snow falls on your roof, it mm-hmm. melts and then often freezes right. again at night. And when you have dirty gutters, that snow has something to back up against. Mm-hmm. And when it goes through this um, thawing and freezing cycle, it can create what's called an ice dam. And those ice dams will then trap more ice behind them through that freezing and thawing. Right. And if you've ever accidentally left a beer in the freezer or, you know, maybe... Why do you have beer in the freezer? Well, sometimes, I mean, sometimes (laughs) you're you're, you're in a hurry, you know? (laughs) I mean, you you can't drink a warm beer. That's just sacrilege. And I mean, unless you're in the UK, but I still think it's weird. Fair enough. But, um... (laughs) But um, so that ice will freeze and expand. And if if it's behind an ice dam, well, then that expansion, Mm -hmm. it's going up under your shingles and it's just working its way in your roof. It creates more problems. And it's it's, it's shortening the life of your roof. It's Mm -hmm. creating potential for roof leaks. And it's so easily avoidable. Right. Okay. Just just by... uh, Clean the gutters. Yeah. Clean clean the gutters. And there there are several other things that can cause ice dams, but Mm -hmm. cleaning your gutters is the easiest initial move to make okay so in addition to that another really simple fix weather stripping around your doors and windows especially if you have an older home um is this just efficiency right at that point that 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 is um a matter of efficiency but in addition to efficiency um your hvac system like any system or a piece of machinery Mm -hmm. The, you know, the, the more it has to work, right. more right? strain. It, 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 yeah, the more strain it is and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, over time that extra strain adds up. Right. In addition to, um, yeah, like increasing your tenant's power bill, mm-hmm. which you, you may very well get an unpleasant phone call about that because tenants and their bills, you know how that goes. You know, you might jinx mm-hmm. it, but actually I don't. That is one of those things I don't think I've ever had a conversation about. Okay. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna mm-hmm. look over at Nolan and see what he's got to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting and shaking the head. No, i have you know never had a conversation. You know, I've had conversations mm-hmm. about you know before people move mm-hmm. in, um, especially when there's you know talking about difference of like you know oil heat or, mm-hmm. or gas heat or you know electric you know like uh, like HVAC systems or whatnot, but never like after the fact or something. Okay. Well, especially with um, a lot of manufactured homes, in my experience, yeah. um, I'm often, I would say, encouraged to pass word along that they, they have a thing or two to say about their, their water or power bill, hmm. um, which, e- even if it's a little high. Yeah. But, um, but no, that's, I mean, you must be pretty on top of a Or lot we just set the standard really high, like, yeah, no, yeah. all your bills are going to be mm-hmm. extremely high and then... Right. Things come in, I, I don't know. We not, you know, don't really talk about that mm-hmm. much. But, I mean, part of it is because, you know, I was like four years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this like crazy winter that just scarred me. Mm-hmm. And since then, it's been like uber insulation. We've done, mm-hmm. you know, like, I think, well, I mean, you know, you've seen some of the units we have. Uh, I think with, that, with the exception of one, maybe, or not even, like all of our mobile homes, we, we, we do stucco and hardy board and the crawl spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons because it keeps it, 
less drafty in the winter. Mm -hmm. Since we did that, we've had no pipe issues. Mm -hmm. And so uh, instead of doing the uh, vinyl siding or whatnot. Right. Uh, skirts, yeah. Right. Skirting. And and yeah, just considering the overall integrity yeah. of what's surrounding that space mm -hmm. is, yeah. is, is a very good approach. No, absolutely. Okay. So in addition to that, another very simple thing you mm -hmm. can do that your tenants may or may not remember to do on your own, mm -hmm. reverse the direction of your ceiling fans. There's, if you climb up on a little A-frame ladder um, and look at the side of your ceiling fan, yeah. you'll notice there's a little switch there. Mm -hmm. And that switch actually determines the direction of spin okay. for the fan. And in turn, whether it's blowing air down or sucking air back up. Huh. And so I, I, I always get this backwards the same way that I have to kind of see which one makes the L when I need to make right. a left. Yeah. Um, but in the winter, you want your fan sucking up because what it's doing is it's pulling like the cold air kind of away from you and then it's taking all the hot air up pushing towards the down. ceiling and pushing it back down. Huh. And that will increase the efficiency of your heating system. And if you have- That's like, a new one. Right, and, yeah. and if you have like, as is the case with many man manufactured homes, if you don't have kind of a draft, you know, area up right. on the top of your house, that can also reduce the likelihood of ice dams okay. forming on the roof, Interesting. especially if the insulation is pretty, pretty thin. Pretty thin. So, you, and and most fans or all fans have this. You just climb up there, move the switch, and then it reverses the. Yeah, it should be most. Um, I'm sure fans that are sold in warmer climates right. may not come with this function. Hmm. But the vast majority of, of ceiling fans that are intended for this climate will have that that function. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. So, what's the worst like issue that you've run into through a property not being prepared for winter, and like when you're like, man, this was a huge, huge issue, and it was such a small, like, easy fix ahead of time. Right. Like I if, I would say, um, well, so plumbing repair is my specialty. Right. So that's what I encounter more than anything mm -hmm. else. And really, as we were discussing earlier, mm -hmm. those busted hose bibs. I mean, even um, I, I'll continue getting calls to replace those right up until the beginning of the next cold season. Right. Because, again, given the way the assembly works, you won't really notice it until mm -hmm. you run that hose for a while. And we had a woman where who requested that we power wash her home. Yeah. And within a couple hours, she noticed that her basement was flooding. Mm. And she had quite a lot of stuff in that basement. And I, I got that call from my partner who was right. performing the power yeah. washing. And I knew instantly You're like, that right, that's, what what, that's what that was. Yeah. Um, and so simply by disconnecting the hose bib, that can be avoided. Hmm. That's uh, that's uh, definitely dropped a little bit of mm -hmm. knowledge on me, things that I wasn't aware of. Now we're going to have to make sure we pass that on mm -hmm. to, uh, I think most of our properties all have hoses just, you know, because mm -hmm. it makes sense. So make sure nobody has any hoses. Again, man, like sometimes you hear these stories and like thankfully it hasn't happened so much. I think I got all my bad, mm -hmm. bad experiences out that one winter in a row. It was, it was, it was rough. Um, right. Yeah. And, and at least once a year, um, and this story is actually from that same winter that you were referring to when yeah. we got those. It's like four years of, ago, yeah, right? Yeah. When it got very, very cold. Right. Um, I was called to a bed and breakfast mm -hmm. where they were they had lost a lot of their water pressure. Mm -hmm. Well, they had no water for you know a couple of days because the pipes had frozen, oh, wow. and then they had lost a lot of pressure once they got it back. Mm -hmm. And I look down in the crawl space yeah. underneath and it you know it looked like a, a water park oh and no. there are just jets spraying everywhere every which direction and i probably replaced oh several dozen feet of copper water lines oh boy to get that rectified but they have since started because it's a pretty big drafty area they they run a, a space here yeah. down there now because no, there's so much plumbing makes it to protect. Difference. Yeah. yeah, just one small space to do makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. All right, man. So do you have any parting tips for everybody as far as what to do, what not to do? Call you if they have any issues. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you have any, um, any plumbing emergencies, yeah. any issues, again, we are your, your fix it guys. Right. We'll be out there pretty quick. Yeah. Um, on a serious note, yeah, how do people reach out to you, uh, to you or to ARM, I guess? So the best way to schedule an appointment with us is mm -hmm. to call 828-767-0794 okay. or shoot an email to AshevilleRentalMaintenance at gmail.com. Word. All right, man. Well, thanks for taking the time to come in. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, you know, people don't take this into consideration and disconnect their hoses, get everything insulated, avoid any issues down the road. Uh, I know we've been, you know, proactive on that. Thanks for your help on mm -hmm. the the work you've done on on some of our stuff. So cool. appreciate it. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, just a couple of things as a reminder for everybody. Uh, I think it's two weeks from now or a week from now when you're listening to this. Uh, first Wednesday of every month, we have our little meetup group over at Archetype Brewing. We're really looking forward to seeing everybody there again. Uh, Last time we did it outside, don't know if the weather will allow, so we'll find out. And also, please uh, leave us a review, share this with your friend, uh, let us know how we're doing. Uh, any feedback, all feedback is uh, definitely appreciated. Take care, everybody. See you next week.